A new season of astrophotography targets slowly making its way upon us. As summer ends, we begin to transition into autumn. So I decided it was time to put any summertime targets I wanted to shoot to bed. And in this video, I decided to go after one that has always eluded me. A good photo of this has always eluded me. So I thought now is the time, better than ever, to shoot it. And I hope this year has been successful for you. And you've been able to shoot what you wanted. So join me in photographing the Pelican Nebula in the constellation of Cygnus. As well as stepping on squeaky balls. Thanks, Finn. So it's about 20 past 10. I've just finished the polar alignment and the calibration of the guide scope and we've slewed over to the Pelican Nebula now. So what I have in there is the Optolong L Pro. Since it's new moon, I don't need a narrowband filter. I just need something to cut through the local light pollution. So here's the local light pollution dealing with. There's, there is a street light behind that tree. And more street lights over there. So this is where something like the L Pro comes in handy because it can cut through the sodium lights there. So it should make a difference in this situation. I wish I could pick up the stars. It's so wonderfully clean. I need to start taking some more exposures. I'm going to be sending this stellar mirror back soon. So it's now time to get the RGB true colors of the stars for the Pelican Nebula. Then I'll merge all my data together and make like a HARGB or something like that. So looking forward to this. I'm probably going to get maybe three or four hours on the pelican tonight and then maybe just slew over to something else but that's the plan for tonight we'll be trying out three minute long exposures and about 70 seconds away from the first one coming in really nice night tonight actually oh there's the iss no that wasn't the iss fading away now. I wonder what that was. It went near Cassiopeia. Anyway, so looking forward to getting some broadband data again. It seems like all you do once you get a multi-narrowband filter is shoot with the multi-narrowband filter. So it's quite nice to go back to broadband. It's actually that clear as well that I can see the Milky Way still going through Cygnus and stuff. Obviously, when I haven't got a big light shining in my eyes, because <laughs> I can't really see anything at the minute. But once all that's turned off, I think I'm going to try again with that camera to get some uh, Milky Way image. I do have a clip in light pollution filter. That was one of the issues I had previously was a gradient through it. So I do have a clip in light pollution filter. So my recipe for this second attempt at Milky Way is, of course, move shoot move rotator the polar alignment laser sight very careful with these never point them at aircraft decent sized memory card that's 64 gigs i'm going to be using a ball head to go on the msm rotator now one of the main differences last time i just used last time i just used the built-in intervalometer on the camera which was only about 30 seconds max so i'm going to use this external intervalometer this time See if I can do maybe two minutes each shot. Of course, I want a tripod to put it all on. Naturally, the camera. Uh, I will be plugging that in to an AC converter so I can power it off the mains. And the other main ingredient is clip-in IDAS D2 filter. D2 maybe might be a bit too harsh, we'll find out. So, I need to assemble everything and put the filter into the camera. So the nice thing about these clip-in filters, they kind of do as the name suggests. You just take the lens off. And these IDAS ones, they don't even really clip in, they kind of just fall in. So you kind of just pop them in like that. And then you want to turn them slightly 
Oh, this might not work actually. Yeah. Yeah, they don't like EFS lenses. Doesn't matter, be right back. Right, so I'm back with some more lenses. I got a couple of other lenses to choose from. Got the Canon 50mm 1.8 Prime, the Nifty 50 as it's called. Might try that one. Or I've got this Sigma 17 to 50. Was it F 2.8? This though sometimes struggles focusing on stars, so might not be giving that one a go. So if you're not sure what I mean by this, so EFS lenses for Canon at least are the ones with the white dot on them, whilst EF lenses have the red dot on them. And the reason why clipping filters don't like EFS is look at how much further this lens points into the body of the camera. So this would be where they would be sitting. Can you see the silver on the Nifty 50 here, the 50 prime, is a lot smaller than that. So this actually strikes the filter and stops you from being able to do it up. So I'll actually be able to clip that one in. So I can use either the 50 millimeter or this Sigma lens. I'm gonna give them both a go and see what I can do. Oh, the Pelican's about to come through. Now obviously it's gonna be really naff because of the lights. I can just about see some data appear in there. But really it's this star color I'm after. So I'll be set setting up a plan for that soon. Turn off these lights so we can get shooting. So I'm gonna set this plan up and we'll get going from there in a moment. So going into the plan mode of the ASI Air Plus, I decided to do about three minute exposures after some testing I found that was actually a nice amount for this rig. I was gonna do 120 images, but I noticed that it was six hours and it would have ended at like 5 p.m. a.m. or something. It was just too long, it would have been light by then. So I decided to change it to 100 images, which would have ended around 4 a.m., which means I wouldn't have worried about it getting too bright. So tracking would have finished and things like that. And that's why I decided to roll with in the end. And I'm aware I need to sort my cable management out. <laughs> it is on my to-do list. The equipment off running. Taking some three minute long images of the Pelican Nebula. So I've took the auto stretch off right now. And this is what I'm really looking for. Look at these star colors. I mean, that's a binary star there. But look at these wonderful star colors. And that's what I'm hoping to get in the final image. But if we do the auto stretch, that's what we're looking at. So here is the pelican. That bright star is the eye of the pelican. So this is what I'm hoping to make into a wonderful HARGB image. So I've got to keep taking some more photos and see what we get. All right, so this is what I got set up here. Just talking a bit quiet because it's almost midnight. So I got the tracker there set up with the ball head, the camera. I ended up using the Sigma 17 millimeters purely because I just wanted that wider field of view. Uh, two minute long exposures at F 3.5, ISO 1600. Yeah, so little remote shutter there of course i have to use a lens heater or else it will do up it's quite humid tonight so i'll just wait for the next picture to come through now so this is what one of the pictures out the camera looked like with the light pollution did a quick levels adjustment in photoshop to get rid of that as best i can and then this is what it's like with a quick adjustment I didn't use the D2 in the end because as I thought it was a bit too powerful. This is what it looked like and even after adjusting the colors just looked off. So I decided not to use the D2 filter. So here's something interesting. I'm in the garage about to film some reviews and things like that. But this video is, <laughs> it's really funny because I say in this video Oh, once you get something like a dual narrowband filter, you stop using broadband filters. And I wanted to disprove that in this video, or at least to myself. 
um, and I had rendered this video, I'd edited it and it was uploaded to YouTube and it's scheduled to release. And then I edited the LXtreme data on its own. And I actually think the LXtreme image that I made is quite possibly the best image I've took to date. So I'm not sure where that stands on <laughs> what I was saying in this video, but there's going to be three images at the end of this. So I'm going to share all those images now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later. For the Pelican, I got about three hours and 45 minutes of broadband, 45 minutes of hydrogen alpha, which I also blended with five hours and 20 minutes of L-Extreme data to make a final HA RGB image.